Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is chapter 2 of 5th grade. Please make sure when you start taking today's notes that you write down your name and you write down the date. The lesson for today's title is right here, using number properties. This is lesson 2.3, so oops, we'll write this right here, lesson 2.3. Please make sure you also copy this down. You should be copying this down as you are watching this. So what I want you to do right now is I would like you to press pause, copy all of this down. Okay. Next thing I want you guys to do, I know it looks like it's a lot, but you will be using this uh, for this, ch this entire chapter. So you do need to memorize this. So what I want you guys to do right now is also copy this down. This is going to take you quite a while but please take your time and have it correctly. Here are the titles, so the commutative property. The commutative property means changing the order. So if you're looking at that, and it only works for sum, which is addition, and then product, which is multiplication, all right? So what that means is the same thing as writing three plus five, that's gonna give you eight, right? Or five plus three is also gonna give you eight. So what did they do? Basically, so, they. So if you see this, they're just rotating the numbers. It's the same thing as just moving around. So the commutative property of addition is changing the order. And that works on multiplication and division. So there's two of them. There's the commutative property of addition. And then there's the commutative property of multiplication. Okay? So that's a commutative property. The next one is the associative property. What is the associative property? Well, you're going to be changing the groups. It changes the groups, but it does not change the answer. For example, so the associative property of addition. If I had, let's see, 1 plus 9 plus, or sorry, this is the best way to do it. What if I had... 10 plus 9 plus 1. Remember, in math, we do something called PEMDAS, and the P stands for parentheses. So I want to group these, okay? Normally, we would like to be like, okay, I'm just going to do 10 plus 9, because we start from the left, right? And we go to the right. But I adding them like this is going to give me a problem. So what I want to do is I want to use the associative property to make some groups to make it easier for me to add and one of the groups i want to change is right here what's nine plus one right because in math we do what's in the parentheses first so if we ask ourselves what's nine plus one well i know nine plus one is ten and ten plus ten i hope we know is going to give you twenty so in the associative property we can change the groups and it will not change the answer so if you did this a different way let's see what is 10 plus 9 well 10 plus 9 is 19 and then what's 19 plus 1 it's still 20 so it doesn't matter which group you choose it's still going to give you the exact same answer so that was the associative property of addition and multiplication so there's two of them there's associative property of addition and associative property of multiplication all right the next one we want to know is the addition property of zero this actually sounds exactly what it sounds like when you add zero to a number so what's eight plus zero well eight plus zero is eight so whenever you add zero to something it's going to stay the same okay that one's an easy one what about this one the mult oops the multiplication let's try a different color what did we not use orange the multiplication property of zero and one well what happens ladies and gentlemen when you multiply by zero so let's see anything times zero is going to give you zero so the multiplication property multiplication property of zero is going to give you zero and what's the multiplication property of 1? Whenever you multiply by 1, it's still going to give you the exact same answer. So the multiplication property of 0 and 1 means 
that your product, your answer is going to be zero. And then the product of your uh, multiplying by one is going to be just that regular number. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is the last one or the new one that we are going to learn. And this one is called the distributive property. What does that mean? So if we were inside of my classroom, and I had a bunch of papers out and I said, uh, can someone distribute these papers to the entire class? What does that mean to distribute? That means to pass out. You want to pass out this number. So when you when you use a distributive property, what you are doing is you're going to multiply your answer of that problem. So let's see. What this is telling me is I'm going to distribute this four. Notice how it's drawing a little rainbow. I'm going to distribute this 4 to this 1 and this 4 to this 3. And what this looks like now is, right, it's going to be 4 times 3 and then 4 times 1. 4 times 3 and then 4 times 1. All right. It's going to make a lot of sense when we start doing a bunch of these problems. Now, remember, for your homework today, you do need to have all of these written down because you're going to be going back and forth to try and figure out which one's which. So let's do a quick review. The commutative property is when you change. This is the keyword right here. So if you want to underline it, this is going to help you a lot when you change the order. The associative property is when you change the groups. The addition property of zero is when you guess what? Add by zero. The multiplication property is of zero is when you multiply by zero or multiply by one. And then the distributive property is when you draw these rainbows and you're going to pass out the number. So you're going to pass out this number to everything that's inside of that parentheses. Three plus three. So, so then it's going to be four times three plus four times three. Because you're, you're passing it out to everybody. So remember, the big key is imagine we were inside the classroom and I asked you to pass them out. And you don't want to skip any students. You want to make sure you give a paper to every single student. All right. So now that you got that, let's go through some of these questions. Here's question number one. This is a review from chapter one. So please make sure you do copy this down so that we remember how to do this. So ladies and gentlemen, how do you write this decimal as a fraction? Well. First of all, you do have to write down this problem. And we're going to ask ourselves, what's the place value here? Well, I know that this one is the, what is this? That's the tenths. This is the hundredths. And then this one is going to be the thousands. So that's going to be 777 over 1,000. All right. Good. One question down. Just a few more to go. Let's write down what we know about an exponent. Well, we know an exponent has a base, and then the little number at the top is the exponent. And what that tells me is this exponent tells me how many bases I have to multiply. So a good answer would be like this, 3 to the third power. Is this, here's the question, is this 3 times 3? Nope. It's not t3 times 3. This is actually telling me I have 3 of those, which means 3 times 3 times 3. That's what an exponent is. Okay. Let's try another one, another practice one. So here we go. Do I need to write all of these down? Yes, you do. So please make sure you copy them all down, and we're going to answer our questions. A uh, good thing for us to do is please press pause copy these questions down and try and answer them before I answer them. Okay. So I'm gonna give you a chance to press pause right now. Hopefully you pressed pause. So now we can answer you've answered them. And now we can just uh, put them together. Three times 10 is 30. Three times 100. That's two zeros is 300 two zeros, right? Three times 1000 is 3,000, three zeros, and then 3 times 10,000 is going to be 30,000, four zeros. All right, let's try another one. Again, please make sure you copy this down. Press pause right now so you can answer the question on your own, and then you can just uh, see if you got the correct answers. So press pause. 
All right, hopefully you had a chance to answer these questions. So let's multiply 7 times 10 is 70. That's 7 with 1 zero. 7 times 100 is 700. That's 7 with two zeros. 7 times 1,000, that's 7 with three zeros. 7 times 10,000, that's 7 with four zeros. Okay, there you go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is our first question. Uh, what we are trying to do is, we first of all, we need to find two answers. One, what number is supposed to go right there? And then two, which property is this question? So let's think about this question. First of all, copy it down so that you have yourself an example. And let's ask ourselves, ladies and gentlemen, 353 plus something plus something is going to give me 353. So 353 plus what number is going to give me 353? Well, if you guessed it, ladies and gentlemen, the answer is going to be zero. So when we add by zero, 353 plus zero gives me 353. So zero goes in the, in the spot. Which property is this? Let's see, which one is the property that adds by zero? It is going to be the associative, sorry, the addition property of zero. So what is the property that's supposed to go here? It's going to be the addition property of zero. Good. Let's try the next one. So let's write this, copy this question down. This is question number two. We want to find out two answers. The first answer is what goes inside of here. And then two, which property is this. So we have something times 141 is going to give us zero. What, well, ladies and gentlemen, what number, or sorry, when we multiply something and it gives you zero, what number did we multiply by? I hope you guessed it. The answer is zero. So which one is the property for multiple, uh, for zero? That is going to be the multiplication property of zero all right that's question number two let's go on to the next one we just got a few more to go here we go we have three plus eight plus ten equals three plus blank plus eight well first things first you got to copy this question down we want to find two answers first answer we want to find out what goes in there and two we want to find out which property this question is well let's see let's see what happened to this question we have three plus eight plus 10 and then all of a sudden we have th we have a 3 there we have an 8 there but it looks like we're missing this so it looks like we changed so what number is supposed to go in there it's supposed to go 10 so we'll put 10 but what did we end up doing we changed the order so which problem is it when we change the order so let's go back all right so when we change the order so here it is we changed the order so this is going to be the commutative property of addition when we change the order remember i told you guys we're going to be going back and forth to those so make sure you have those questions out so the answer for this one is the commutative property of oops the commutative uh, commutative property of addition there we go commutative property of addition all right let's try another one here we go number four we want to find two answers the first answer is what goes inside of the blank and number two which property is it all right so we have 16 plus 12 and now we have 12 plus 16 so what what goes in the blank so we have 16 16 we know that 12 is supposed to go in the blank but in this one, 16 was first, and now 12 is first. So what did we do? We changed the order. So, ladies and gentlemen, which one is it when we change the order? That is going to be the commutative property of addition. Good job. Let's move on to the next one. Number five, numero cinco. Numero cinco. All right, so we have 
blank remember please don't forget to copy this question down press pause copy the question down so we can move forward we have blink times 25 is the same thing as 25 times blink so first things first we want to find out what goes in there and number two we want to find out what property is supposed to go there all right so we have blink times 25 equals 25 times 18 well I know 18 goes in here, so 18 goes in the blank. And then what ended up happening, we changed the order. But this time, ladies and gentlemen, we don't do addition anymore. We did what? Multiplication. So this is going to be the commutative. Say that with me. Commutative. Commutative property of multiplication commutative property of multiplication all right that was number five pretty simple once you start figuring it out right so you start looking at these notes that we copied down it's going to be fairly easy for you to figure it out you just got to remember which one's which so let's see this one changes the order that's the commutative property the associative property that one changes the groups the addition of property is adding by zero the multiplication property of zero is multiplying by zero. The multiplication property of one is multiplying by one. And then the distributive property is when you share or when you pass out one of these numbers to another number. All right. So let's try the next one. Which one are we on? Five. Here we go. Number six. Ooh, check this one out. So we have this problem. Let's copy it down. It looks difficult, but it's not. All we got to do is try our best. So we have three. And ladies and gentlemen, we don't have any number there. So, uh, sorry, any operation. That actually means that this is going to be a multiplication problem. I remember distributive property is multiplication. So this means we want to distribute. Notice what we have. We have three times, right? So we have three times. And remember, we want to draw some rainbows. So it's going to be three times eight. And then we're going to have three times four. There we go, three times four. So which property was this one? This one is the distributive property. That's all it's called, the distributive property, when you pass them out. <coughs> all right, sorry about that. Let's try uh, another one. Number seven. So let's see what's happening. First of all, copy it down. You have six times nine times three. And now we have blank times three times nine. So I have a nine, I have a nine, I have a three, I have a three. So which number is missing? It looks like the number missing is going to be a six. But what happened? Did we change the order? Did we change the groups? What did we end up doing? So let's take a look. We're doing multiplication and it looks like we changed it. So over here, we were multiplying nine times three first, and all of a sudden, what are we multiplying first over here, right? Because we got to do what's inside the parentheses. Now we are multiplying six times three. So what happens when we change the groups? Which one is that one? When you change the groups, please look back at your paper. What is the one when you change the groups? The one that when you change the groups is going to be the associative property so the associative property of multiplication there we go the associative property of multiplication that is when we change the groups so in the first question it was nine times three and now in the second question it's six times three all right that was question number seven let's do question number eight all right let's see what it is Ooh. So we have blank times one equals 24. So what times one is gonna give you 24? Well, I hope we all know that. The answer is going to be 24. So which is the property when we multiply by one? So when we multiply by one, that's going to be the multiplication property of one. So when you multiply by one, that's the multiplication property of one. All right, good job. So now we've practiced the properties. Now we're going to have to put this into practice and see if we can figure it out. 
So it says like this, we want to use the distributive property to find the product. So that means we want to find the answer to this problem. Hmm. <coughs> what do you guys think we can do to solve this problem? So we want to find use the distributive property to answer this problem. Does anybody think that they know what we might have to do when we use the distributive property? So we got some questions here. Let's see, we got nine. Hmm. Maybe we can break up one of these problems. What we can do is break this one up. Can you guys think of any two numbers that give me 16? Right, so we would have nine times four times four. Nine times four, nine times four. Hmm. Can you guys think of anything? No, that's not right either. What can we do? Maybe we can break these up into two different numbers. Let's try this. We will do this one in a separate class because I want you guys to do a few different problems first when we use the distributive property. So let me find the next question I want you guys to answer. Give me one second, please. Actually, we'll just do them right now. All right, this is what we're going to do. So check this out. We're going to break this up into two different problems like this. So I want to break this number into an easy, easy number, 16. Give me two numbers that I can add together that gives me 16. So that's going to be 10 plus 6. That's what I thought of. I thought of 10 plus 6. So what I want to do is do the distributive property to find the answer. So what I'm going to do is I wrote this down. So check this out. Let's try that one more time. Let's see what I did. We have 9 times 16. I don't know how to do this. So what I want to do is I want to break this up into two numbers. What two numbers do I want to break 16 into? I have 10 and 6 right because 10 plus 6 gives me 16 so I got to put them into a group and then I have to multiply by 9 now if we remember <coughs> in the last question remember we shared the where is it right here you see how we did this we multiply 3 times 8 and then we multiply 3 times 4 and we got our answer so that's what we want to do here so I'm gonna multiply 9 times 10 I'm gonna write that down 9 times 10 10, and I'm going to multiply 9 times 6 plus 9 times 6. And I'm going to add both of these together now. All right. So let's do 9 times 10 is 90. And then 9 times 6 is 54. I just need to add both of these numbers together now. Plus 54. So let's see. 4 plus 0 is 4. And 9 plus 5 is 4. 14. That's one way to do it. Can you guys think of another number that we can break uh, 16 into? Um, let's see. What if I did 9 and 8 plus 8? It's going to get you the exact same thing. So all we need to do now is right, 9 times 8 and then 9 times 8. So 9 times 8 plus 9 times 8. Does anybody know what 9 times 8 is? 9 times 8 is 72, plus 72. And if we add those two together, right, we got to put them on top, line up the decimals. 2 plus 2 is 4, 7 plus 7 is 14. So your answer for this question is 144. <coughs> Let's try another one. We got a few more to go. We're about halfway there. So we have 7 times 37. This is a very hard problem to do. So what I want to do is I want to break down this 37. Can you guys think of any two numbers that we can break 37 into? Well, I'm thinking 30 plus 7. I'm going to multiply that by 7. So now we're right. We need to use the distributive property to multiply. So I'm going to do 7 times 7 and then 7 times 30. I'm going to add both of those together. So we have 30 times 7 
plus 7 times 7. Well, if you have your multiplication chart, we can do this one together. What is 7 times 7? That's going to give you 49 plus, and I'm going to multiply over here, 7 times 30. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to learn a few tricks to multiply here. We're going to multiply this one at a time. So let's see. 7 times 3. What is 7 times 3? That's going to give me 21. And then I'm just going to add a 0, which gives you 210. So now we just need to add both of these together. I have 210 plus 49. Hold on a second. <coughs> Excuse me. I apologize about that. I sneezed. So we need to line up our decimals. So I have 210 plus 49, right? There's our decimals. We're going to add them up. 9 plus 0 is 9. 4 plus 1 is 5. And then the 2 just falls down. So the answer for this problem is... <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. 259. There we go. Let's answer the next question. Number 11. Let's break this one down. So I'm trying to think of two numbers that I can break 45 into. Can you guys think of something? 40 plus 5. That's going to make that easy. Times 8. So now we just want to distribute this 8 to both of these. So I'm going to distribute this 8 to this 5. That rainbow means multiply. So I have 8 times 5. Plus, now I have to distribute to the other one. 8 times 40. So that's going to be 8 times 40. So now all we need to do is multiply. What is 8 times 5? That's 40. And now we need to do this over here. Let's do that little trick again. So 8 times 4 is 32. And I'm going to add a 0. Gives you 320. So now we just want to do is add all of these together. So here's our decimal. Here's our decimal. It's at the end, right? So how do we add numbers? We want to line up our decimals. So we have 320 plus, there's our decimal, 40. So let's add it all up. 0 plus 0 is 0. 4 plus 2 is 6. And then just drop down the 3. You get 360. All right. Good job, guys. Let's move on. Number, what is this? Number 12. Number 12. Let's break this one up into two numbers. What numbers can you think up? We need to use the distributive property, so please don't forget to copy this down. Let's break down the number 41. I can think of 40 plus 1. That's an easy one. We're going to put that in a group, and we're going to do times 5. All right, don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, we do need to distribute this. So I'm going to do 5 times 1. So I'm going to write that down. 5 times 1 plus, and now I need to distribute to the other one, 5 times 40. So that's 5 times 40. Now we're just going to multiply and add them all up together. 5 times 1 is 5 plus, and we're going to use that little trick. So what's that little trick? Let's see. 5 times 4 is 20, and I'm going to add the 0, which is going to give you 200. So, ladies and gentlemen, how do we add numbers? We want to make sure we add, line up our decimals. There's our decimal. We put the bigger number on top, so we have 200 decimal like that. There's our decimal. And 200 plus 5 should give you what, ladies and gentlemen? It's going to give you 205. All right, let's try another one. Let's see if we have uh, any different problems. Uh, it looks like we got a few. So let's see. Let's do a few more of these so we can figure it out. So number 13. I want to break this one up into two numbers. Can you guys think of something easy for 84? Well, I'm thinking of 80 plus 4. I'm going to put that into a group, right? Because we got to do that times 6. And now remember, we need to share this. So we have 6 times 4. Oops, I'll do it like this. 6 times 4. So I'm going to write that over here. 6 times 4. Plus, and now we need to do this other side. I have 6 times 80. Plus 6 times 80. Alright. So let's multiply this one together right here. So 6 times 4, if you know, 
write down the answer if you don't know please use a multiplication chart it is on page one page 139 of your planners I'll say that again that was page 139 of your planners you can look up at the multiplication chart 6 times 4 is 24 <coughs> plus 6 times 80 so you now have let's do that little trick again you have 6 times 8 which is going to give you 48 and then we're going to add the 0 gives you 480 so now ladies and gentlemen how do we add numbers together remember we need to line up our decimals so we have 480 plus 24 that's where our decimals are right we line them up 4 plus 0 is 4 8 plus 2 is 10 don't forget to carry the 1 and then 4 plus 1 is 5 so your answer for this problem is going to be 504, 504. All right, let's try another one. Let's break this one apart. So you wrote it down, you pressed pause, you try to answer it, you wrote it down, and now we're gonna break out this nine. So what numbers can you think for 91? I'm gonna think of 90 plus one. And I'm just gonna put this into a group times three now remember i need to distribute this so i have three times 90 so that's going to be three times 90 plus don't forget to put it in a group and then i have three times one plus three times one i'm gonna put that in a group and now we just need to multiply let's use our trick if you have your multiplication chart you can use it so let's see what is three times nine that's going to give you 27. Don't forget to add the zero. There we go. Plus, and now we just need to do three times one. And that's going to give you three. Let's add these two together. 270 plus three gives you 273. All right. Good job, guys. Let's try a few more. Got number 15 right here. Let's break this one apart. So first thing you did was you wrote it down. And now let's break this number apart. Can you guys think of two numbers that are going to give me 73? Well, I'm thinking of 70 plus 3. Let's put parentheses over this. I'm going to do times 4. And don't forget we need to use the what property? The distributive property. So I have to do 4 times 70. So I'm going to write that down over here. 4 times 70. Put that in a group. Plus... And then I have to do 4 times 3. And I'm going to put that in a group right there. And I'm going to multiply. Let's try that trick again that I taught you guys. Let's see. So we have 4 times 7. If you know it off the top of your head, write it down. If you don't, please use that multiplication chart. So 4 times 7 gives you 28. And then you can add the 0, which gives you 280. Plus, let's see, what is 4 times 3? Let's count by 4s. 4, 8, 12. So that's going to give you 12. Now we just need to add these two together. How do we add numbers, ladies and gentlemen? Remember, you need to line up your decimals. So you have 280 decimal plus 12 decimal. And there we go. Now we just add them all up together. 2 plus 0 is 2. 1 plus 8 is 2. 9 and 2 just falls down so your answer is 292 all right good job guys i think we've done enough of that let's see if we can answer this next question so number 17 it says use the property to find the sum or the product to find the addition or the product the answer for this all right so i'm looking at this question right here so you wrote it down and I'm looking here and it's like, what do you guys see about this? I'm looking at this right here and I'm like, man, I know and I learned that whenever I multiply anything by zero, my answer is going to be zero. So I know it doesn't matter what this number is here. I know that anything multiplied by zero is going to give me zero. So do you guys remember the property that it was called when we multiply by zero? That was going to be the multiplication property of zero. Good job.
All right, let's try another one. Let's see, like this, it says, use a property to find the sum or the product. So I'm thinking here, it's like, okay, man, looking at this question, I wrote this down and I'm like, hmm, how would I solve this problem? But if I could just change the groups, that might be easy. So let me try this. I'm gonna write this down again. I have 34, but this time no parentheses, like this. And I'm like, okay, okay. What if I did this? Does anybody know this answer? Five times two? Well, I know that one's easy. Five times two is 10. And does anybody know how to multiply by tens? If I did multiply 34 times 10, well, here's the trick. So 34 times one is 34. And then I'm just gonna add the zero and that's going to give me 340. So what is the property called when I get to change the groups look back at your paper that we copied the notes right at the beginning when you get to change the groups when you change the groups that is going to be does anybody remember when you change the groups if you don't remember let's go all the way back couldn't hear any answers when you change the groups it is going to be the associative property of multiplication so where is it? Here. Nope. Is this the one? Nope. This one right here. No. Yeah, this one right here. This is the associative property of multiplication. Good job. Let's try another one. Ooh, what do you guys notice about this one? we are adding by zero. So which property is it when we add by zero? You guys let me know, and I would like to see it in your notes when we solve it next. Look back at your question and see if you can solve it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's it for today. I want you guys to try your best on your homework, and I will see you when I get back to school. Bye. Have a great day.